Ciao everybody, welcome back to the Bianconeri Zone. This is a coach's corner because we have signed, finally, and it's finally been announced, Paul Pogba is returning back to Juventus. Pogba, Pogba again, whatever you want to coin it. He is back, he is back in black and white, and it is the return of the prodigal son. He's back. We have a legit number, or top five center midfielder in the world, back in the club. And it's been five years of pure annoyance of seeing how the club tried to replace him over the years. And they just replaced him with himself. So it's been reported that the terms of the deal, it's going to be a three-year deal. Um, anywhere between seven and a half and nine million euros uh, as a base. And then plus two and a half as bonuses per year. And like I said, three-year deal runs until about 2025, if we do correct math. Same time as when Max Allegri's contract uh, stops or ends. So take that with what you will. In this video, we are going to go over... I didn't grab pictures for this particular coach's corner because I think we all know what Paul Pogba does. Um, we are going to dive into some analytics and statistics and uh, go deep. And we compared him to a couple of other midfielders that we were pursuing slash on our squad slash just, just in the... In, like, around his level, uh, we'd say. So like the video if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and consider joining the member squad because our Discord's a good time. Now with all that, the main con, I will say, that goes into Paul Pogba coming back to Juventus is his time at United was hit or miss. He was very good some games, he was very good for some months, and then he went quiet for some games. And is that a is that a test to the coaches that he had there? Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had him on the left-hand side of midfield sometimes as a winger. It's it's a whole multitude of things. And of course, the injuries that he was picking up um, throughout the later stages of his Man United career. Because during the early stages, it was just bone problems. It was ankle problems. And I have a picture that illustrate that now. He missed quite a lot of games. I'm not going to lie. But over this past season, it's been more muscle, more muscular injuries. And that's a little bit of a concern. Um, because as you age, muscles, not deteriorate, but like, you know what I mean? They get worn out more. Um, and his recovery time hasn't been up to snuff. I can probably point that out to him not really wanting to come back and he wasn't in the mindset to stay with Man United and he didn't really care. But I don't want to question his professionalism at that point either. I think he's just over it. That, and I've been saying that on the live shows anyway. So also I'm wearing my Pogba jersey. So Pogba, this is from like 2015 or whatever, um, number six jersey. So I wore it for a special occasion. So let's take a look at the injuries. Um, it's clear as day there. Like I said, ankle problems were, were the majority of his injuries during his time at Man United. And this past year, as you can see, there is a hamstring injury that's kept him out for 14 games and a cap injury that's kept him out for five. And those are the concerning ones. Those are the concerning ones because they're muscular injuries. Um, and again, I think the calf injury, he, he did get a knock, but I don't think... I don't think he's been out because I've seen him doing videos of him training and stuff. Like, he's fine. Uh, so I think it's just precaution at this point to go sign a new deal with a new club. And now that he has, I I think he, he's going to go to Miami. And I think he's going to go have a nice training regimen um, with his with his trainers and whatnot, his personal trainers. And he's going to come back fit as a flea. So take a look at that. I know that's the that's one of the main issues with him coming back is his injury record. However, I think he's going to be fine. Um, and again, we're going to question the Juventus, uh, medical staff, J medical, but we're getting a new revamped, uh, medical staff as well. And I think they're going to do their due diligence to look at his ankles and hamstrings and calf and, and assess it properly before spending almost 30 million euros in three years on him. I think we're going to do our due diligence. So with that, I, I think we're okay. And to be honest, I'm, I'm sick and tired of talking injuries because that's what's riddled this club for years. I just want to move on. I want a new. I want a new staff, and I, and I just want these guys assessed properly, because it's weird. It's just weird. But we'll move on. And at this at the beginning, uh, before we do comparables, I am just going to do standalone stats, um, and we're going to dive into them. I'll explain them a bit, 
if you're a little bit confused of what they are, I'll, I'll try and go a little bit slower, but I'm going to focus on the main things that he brings to the club um, going into it uh, before we actually look at the numbers. You get elegance, you get power, you get precision, you get technique, you get physicality with this player. That's what you get with Paul Pogba when he plays. You've seen France Paul Pogba, you've seen Juventus Paul Pogba, and you've seen Manchester United sometimes Paul Pogba. That, that Top five center midfielder in the world, no doubt in my mind, when he's on. When he's not on, he looks disinterested. Uh, he, he makes brain-dead decisions, but again... If he's willing, if he's the main man, if he's really, really will, willing to get at it, he's going to be great. Um, so he has the ability to glide from box to box. He has the creativity to pick out passes. His long range passing is incredible. Um, it's just, and his long range shooting is incredible too. And he likes to play around. He likes to do tiki taka. He's got, he's got nice uh, skill on the ball. Actually, immense skill. Let's not kid ourselves. He can do roulettes. He can do flip flaps. He can do step overs. He can do whatever you want. Play one twos edge of the area. He can dribble. Like I said, from like you know, we think Rabio can glide from one box to another with like seven uh, touches. Pogba would probably do it in five. And it's better. And it's more. Uh, it's more uh, important and direct. So here we go. Standard stats. These are per 90s. So as you can see, the assist is in the 99th percentile among all central midfielders in the top leagues in Europe. Incredible. Like he's still doing it. It's per 90. So that, that that's a better indication. It's not total counting stats, but it's in per 90, which because he's missed so much time is a better indication of where he lies in the grand scheme of the football world. Expected goals, 80, 80th percentile. He, didn't, he hasn't scored much uh, the past 365 days. Um, non-penalty goal or expected goals around the same expected assists top top percentile and non-penalties expected goals and expected assists is top percentile so listen he still produces when he plays he produced on that really crap man united team at the beginning of the season with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer playing counter-attack football and they got wingers just bombing on doing nothing and he was Paul Pog was used in the wrong uh, in the wrong way, in my opinion, with Man United. So those are standard stats. We'll move on to uh, shooting ones now. Not much green, but again, this is counted over 365 days. So the last 300, so from whenever we watch this to the past May 20th or whatever we watch this. Um, again, per 90s. Shots on target or shots total. He does like to shoot the ball, which is good because our midfielders do not shoot the ball at all uh, at the uh, Juventus currently at our midfielders. And you know, he's got the swagger, you know, he's got the class and and the ability to actually hit the net, hit the target and to score some peaches. It's like great goals. So why wouldn't you bring a guy in like this? Max Allegri, his whole... His whole time at Juventus, even the, the first stint, he, he, he wants goals from midfield. This whole season, he was begging Rabiot to score a goal. He couldn't. He loves Mc, Rabiot, or sorry, Allegri loves McKenny. Why? Because he can have, he has the ability to score goals. Is he the most technical player? No. But can he score goals? Absolutely. Paul Public is a combination of both. Technical ability and the ability to score. And create. So... Take a look at those. We know we know what he's all about. We've seen the pug booms. We've seen the goals for France. He still has it. Like he's he's not dropped off a cliff or anything. So we should be excited. Next, we're gonna go on to possession stats because he's a central midfielder. And boom, lots of green. <laughs> uh, that's what you want to see. Look at the dribbles completed, dribbles attempted per ninety. He's in the 99th percentile. Dribbles time, dribble players dribble pass. So he has, like I said. Going from box to box, he is in the top tier of players in in Europe. Still, to this day, per ninety, he he does two point seven or sorry, two point two four dribbles past the players. It's pretty black and white here, no pun intended, but uh, he still has the ability to do things. Progressive carries, he gets five five point eight two uh, per game or per ninety. Sorry, so lots of green here. I think. This is one of the biggest positives he brings to the team. He, he can transmit defense to attack by himself. And he's very good at it. Very, very good at it. 
don't worry about the nutmegs and these ones. <laughs> um, possession continued. So as we see, we have another couple of green bars there, past targets, um, passes received. So past targets, it's how he makes himself open or how open he gets himself, like if he's breaking lines or whatever, if he's getting himself uh, past defenders. And then the passes received, obviously. So he doesn't receive eight of his passes, whether it's a bad pass, balls in the air, maybe it's a bad touch, like that could happen. And uh, yeah, as you can see, lots of green, lots of green. See, missed controls, 1.6. So out of the eight passes he misses, uh, 1.6 of them are miss controls. It's all laid out right here. It's nice. So take a look at those possession stats. Again, top, top, top ability to keep the ball himself as well, to shield opponents, to just play forward. And we're going to see in the passing stats, we're going to see that come too. So here, here we go. We see more green, uh, dead ball passes. Doesn't take set pieces. So that, that means that bar's low. Um, we see through balls attempted, uh, passes under pressure. He does a lot because he can handle it. He makes a lot of passes under pressure because he can handle the pressure. He's strong. He can hold off defenders. Guy, I don't need to explain this because everyone knows Paul Pogba. Everyone knows Paul Pogba. You know, he's, he's six, two, six, three, strong as an ox, holds people off, does Maradona's again, like very, very good. As you can see, you can switch the ball as well. Something we do not do enough. Only Manuel Locatelli, I, I, I see in games for us this year, switching the ball and pinging it forward. So imagine Di Maria, Chiesa on the wings, Paul Pogba getting the ball around uh, mid, his own defensive third to midfield, just spraying balls left and right. And and putting Di Maria and Chiesa on their way. And then your guy Dusan Blavic in the middle, feasting on these passes. It's mouthwatering at this point. We continue on with passing, a uh, couple more green bars there, pass attempted, uh, these are just pass types kinda. So basically with uh, your head, your foot, whatever, whatever, whatever. A um, lot of red there because the pass out of bounds is low, so that's good. <laughs> it's not like Rabio, it's not like Bentinker. Uh, passes blocked is kinda low, but uh, again, sometimes when you have to be a creative player, you don't have to force things, but sometimes passes will get intercepted because defending teams put blocks up. So you have to make incisive passes. And sometimes, not everyone's God, they'll intercept passes. So that's why that number's there. And we have a third passing graphic. Oh my goodness. More and more green. So again, these are just uh, passes completed, attempted completion. Look at the long range passes. He, he's got that in his toolkit. Uh, medium range, he's got that as well. And then the short passes, he's actually not uh, not in the top tier at all for short passes completed um, percentage. So again, is that him trying to play around the edge of the box? Is that him making mistakes? Yeah, absolutely. But you let him because he can pull those off sometimes. So again, take a look. Passes into the penalty area, he's up there. Pass into the final third. He's really up there. 6.87 per game. Excellent. Moving the ball forward, which we desperately, desperately need. We need a guy that, again, Locatelli, if he's going to play deeper, he does not going to have the opportunity. If Paul Pogba's on the team, he's going to play more advanced. He plays more balls into the final third. It unlocks your creator, your other attackers. Like, again, Chiesa, Di Maria, Vlaovic. If this guy's playing them, if Paul Pogba's playing those kind of passes into those three, Expect some goals. Expect more than one goal a game. <laughs> so, again, look at the stats. You can find these all in football reference. Um, but it, it's, it's a good tool to use. Because, again, the comparison and the per 90 is what is important. And when we do the comparables, I, I definitely took it from a per 90 perspective instead of a totality counting stat perspective. So that's the passing. We'll go into goal and shot creation. This is this is the massive. This is one of my favorite uh, metrics in the world of football because it's about what you create. So if you create a goal, if you create shots, if you create shots, it's still good. But obviously, the goal is what uh, we want most. 
So SCA is the shot creation, GCA is the goal creation. So let's look at the shot creations first. Almost three per game. Almost, sorry, three per 90, but three per game. Um, live action, it's, yeah, it's 2.34. It's very high, top 90th percentile as a, as, a, as a central midfielder, not even as attacking midfielder. So that's pretty good. Um, and then we go down more to goal creating actions. He's, he's in top. Like he's a top percentile. 0 0.55 per game, per 90 minutes. Goal creating. So if he plays 50 games, he's going to he's gonna contribute 25 goals from center midfield. If he plays 30 games, he's going to create 15 goals. 8 goals, 7 assists, whatever. 3 goals, 12 assists, whatever. That's him on a bad team. Or sorry, not a bad team. That's him on a on a uh, team managed by an incapable person, an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So I know everyone's gonna say everyone's gonna uh, berate Allegri here, but Allegri and Pogba in the past, it's been nice. It's been quality. It's why we sold them for 105 million euros in the first place. So take a look at those again. All these stats, I'm going to compare them to. I'm going to compare Pogba to other players. So stay tuned for that. But the last thing we do before uh, we compare is we're going to look at the defensive side of the game because he is a central midfielder, and as a central midfielder, you have to do both attack and defend. So we'll take a look at those because not that he lacks in defensive uh, awareness, not awareness, defensive counting stats. Um, it, it, it doesn't paint the pretty picture at some points. As you can see, lots of red. However, take it with a grain of salt because under Allegri, there's more structure and he won't be asked to do as much defending. Okay, so we look here. Times dribble pass, 0.7, not a lot. As a central midfielder, that's actually quite not, not bad, actually. Um, but... Yeah, he doesn't offer much defensively. And uh, Man United suffered. So when he's with us, he'll play on the left side of the midfield three. So if Zakaria and Locatelli are also playing beside him, those guys are going to protect him. Those guys are going to be defensively aware, defensively sound and protective. So I'm not worried about Paul Pogba's defensive outputs, nor should you guys because he's got two other brick solid uh, people or players beside him. The second uh, goal round about for defensive stats. Um, yeah, again, a lot of red. Not many errors, but uh, lots of red. It's okay. I already, I already gave you my piece. Um, again, if he's lining up in a midfield three of Locatelli Zakaria, all good. I have no problem. And now we'll move on to the comparables. And I forget who I used. Okay, here we go. It's right here. So, Leon Goretzka, obviously, baller for Bayern Munich. Uh, Paul Pogba, Nicolo Barella, one of the best center midfields in Italy. Sergei milinkovic Savic, another great center midfield in Italy. Uh, Yuri Tielemans, because we we're kind of linked to him, and he's in the Prem, so the Prem comparison with Pogba. And then, obviously, one of ours, Manuel Locatelli. So, I don't know what Ali did with my graphic here. I can't tell who's who. <laughs> I think uh, I think the top is Goretzka. Yeah, I think it just the names should be on the left hand side there, and Paul Pogba is is uh, producing per ninety minutes the second best out of these six, and for poor 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 Manuel Locatelli is sitting at a zero point one seven non penalty expected goals and assists per game. <laughs> poor guy, feel bad for him this year. He got uh, stuck in a hard place. But uh, if, you, if we look per 90, Paul Pogba outproduced Barella and Milinkovic Savic, one guy that Italians and Serie A fans know and love in Barella, and uh, another Milinkovic Savic in which we, Juventini, wanted. Still won, still won. But like, we're just comparing Pogba and Milinkovic Savic here. Obviously, Goretzka is a class of his own at this point. So we'll. Uh, We'll move on we'll, because we got more. 
We got more cooking. We got more comparables. Uh, did I click the next one? Oh, sorry. A little technical glitch here. I, I got the same one twice. My fault, guys. Uh, so here we go. Possession per 90. So again, I took this per 90 because of the fact that Paul Pogba did not play as many minutes as other players on this list. And if you want to take into perspective, a per 90, because that makes more sense. The counting stats would obviously go in Barella's favor, would obviously go in Milinkovic Savage's favor, and Locatelli and Tielemans, because they played way more. But we got progressive carries. And if we think of Nico Barella, that guy transports the ball from defense to attack like nobody else in Serie A. Paul Pogba is literally right there. And again, he, he, he was on a Man United team where he played in not an advantageous situation in midfield for them. And he's still producing at that rate. I, I don't see the issue here. Again, the issue is if he's hurt, whatever. He's going to miss games. But the consistency aspect of it, he's still producing, and people call him inconsistent. He's still producing at a Nico Barella level. Better than a Milinkovic Savage level for something that we need him to do. We need Paul Pogba to transport the ball from defense to attack. And it's clear that he can still do it. So, um, we'll move on because... Again, I, I pointed this one out in, uh, in particular, in this statistic in particular, because of the fact that we need a guy, we need a central midfielder to transition the play from defense to attack. Because we sorely lacked that this year. It was, it was pretty evident. Like you see Locatelli, poor guy again, two and a half per game. He was told to sit. You think Rabio's at six and a half? No, he's not. And that was his role. So we move on to passing now. Um, so the pass, long ball passing completion, you see Pogba up there, Manuel Locatelli, like I said, Manuel Locatelli is excellent at long balls. We've seen that all season. He's very good at pinging the ball, switching play. Um, Paul Pogba is obviously lower sample size, but he is a little bit marginally better. We've seen that Man United, the ball's over the top to Rashford. We've seen that. We've seen that for France where the ball, uh, he gets the ball on the touchline, swings one into Giroud perfectly. He's quality. He's quality. And he still has it. He still has that ability because, again, this is the last 365 days that we're counting or that we're gathering the stats from. Milinkovic Savage doesn't have that really quite in his locker. Barella, no. Tielemans, no. Goretzka, not really. So now you're going to have two guys out of these. Six quality midfielders. The two guys on Juventus are very good at long balls. Which is something, again, we need to unlock defenses because we cannot unlock low block defenses. We cannot uh, unlock stubborn defenses and we cannot utilize our, our strengths. Our strengths are pace down the wing. Alvaro Morata this year, he's fast. He's a fast dude. We should have utilized that more. We should have utilized... Uh, Quadrado more, um, Chiesa when he was available and not torn, not didn't have a torn ACL. Like we didn't exploit defenses the way we should have, and it's uh, it's sad because we did have the we did have some talented players on our team this year. But next year, I think it's going to be a totally different beast. We're going to have some. I think what we've already seen from this summer and winter is we have ambitious. Uh, not owner. I'll say, yeah, ambitious owners. Agnelli, ambitious. Elkin, he sees what's going on. But I, I, from what I'm seeing from our management and Arriva Bene and Ketterbini, they are hungry. They want to get stuff done. It's a nice contrast from last summer, at least. Um, we'll move on to another passing per 90. And it's the progressive passes. I used to, I love the stat. Um, I used it for the Manuel Locatelli. Uh, coach's corner and Paul Pogba leads the list per 90 again these are these are clear box to box central midfielders comparables these are clear Paul Pogba Nico Barella Leon Goretzka Yuri Tielemans Manuel Locatelli Sergei Milinkovic-Savic 
per 90. This is this is not counting stats. This is what they do when they're on the field. So again, an inconsistent Paul Pogba produces more progressive passes than these uh, five other midfielders. Take it for what it's worth. You want to look at these stats and take it as Bible, sure. If you want to do your eye test and what you read online, sure. Whatever you need to do. But from when I watched Paul Pogba, he, he was not as inconsistent as people say. He was not Jogba at Man United. It's just the environment he was in and the environment he was around led to probably eye test lackluster performances. And now we head on to uh, miscellaneous stats. So I grabbed the... Uh, what did I grab here? Oh, aerial duels. Still a beast in the air. Still a monster, of course. He's 6'4 or 6'2, whatever. 6'3, I forget what I said. I forget what he actually is listed at. But uh, again, two Juventus guys at the top. Aerial duels. Our midfield is going to be Zakaria, most likely. Paul Pogba, Manuel Locatelli. All units, all able to win aerial battles, just big physical specimens, and that's what Allegri likes. That's a typical midfielder Allegri likes. So it's a good thing he's coming in. Milinkovic Savage down there, at the, I, and I'm not picking on Mil Milinkovic Savage here because I'm sure he's better at some things than Paul Pogba. Like I almost guarantee it. I didn't really, I wasn't really focusing on him in when I was doing my research, but. Paul Pogba in, in main categories is still better and, and statistically proven in the last 365 days when he's inconsistent and injured. He still has more uh, productivity than Milinkovic Savage. And again, will I be mad if SMS signs with the team? Absolutely not. Bring him in as well because he's still quality. However, please do not discount or discredit Paul Pogba for inconsistency. And now we're going to compare my favorite side again, the goals and uh, shot creations. <laughs> Goal creations per 90. Leading. Again, poor Manuel Locatelli at the bottom there. Um, Malikovic Savage in the middle of the group this time. And Barella right underneath Pogba there. And again, the counting stat is different because it's he's missed so much time. But per 90, Paul Pogba's goal... Con or Goal creations per, per 90 is 0.73. Highest on this list. And again, if you put De Bruyne there, obviously De Bruyne's better. Obviously De Bruyne's going to have more or better stats. But these are the guys I compare to Serie A guys. Uh, Goretzka, that's very close to Pogba's uh, physical abilities and, and playing style. Tielemans, a Premier League comparable. And Manuel Locatelli, a Juventus comparable. And then we'll do the shot creation portion. He's third now. Barella creates the most. Goretzka is second and tied. But again, still decent number there. Still creating th almost three and a half shots per 90. Imagine that. He's creating three and a half. Like again, Manuel Alcatelli is creating two and a half. So you get another dude right beside him creating one more than Locatelli. Starting to get more shots on goal here, or shots at least. Uh, it's up to our, our attackers to get uh, shot the shot on target. But uh, yeah, proof is in the pudding here, folks. And again, I don't think nobody's doubting Paul Pogba, but I don't want people to say he's as inconsistent as Premier League fans are saying. I don't want I don't want people to take that as the Bible, as like final word, make your own inferences. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I am, I am trying to convince you that he is still a top five center midfielder in the world. And he's not that inconsistent to be honest, but you can have your own opinions on this and let me know what your opinions are. If the, if these stats swayed you at all, if these stats change your mind. So the last thing we're going to check is the defensive com uh, comparables. And again, it's not gonna be good, <laughs> but uh, he's at the bottom here for tackles and interceptions per ninety. <laughs> uh, again, if Zakaria 
and Locatelli are beside him, I have no issues whatsoever because he'll still do a job and he won't be asked to do as much defensive or have as much defensive responsibility. So look at that. Leon Gretzka at the most. Barella and Pogba at the bottom there. Manuel Locatelli is asked to do a lot, obviously. So there it is. So, again, these stats sponsored, or well, not sponsored because I just, I, I'm just i citing my, uh, my source here. I used all these stats from Football Reference. Uh, it's a good little website to use. Um, let me just go back in the middle here, get central. That was a statistical breakdown of Paul Pogba. Again, when we move on into the summer, we'll have a better idea of who else is on the team. But for now, what we do know is Di Maria is on the team, Paul Pogba is on the team. And nobody's left yet, technically. In a 4-3-3, Paul Pogba will be lining up as a left central midfielder. I assume I would also put Locatelli at the base as the regista. Is he a regista? Not totally, but he obviously he has the, the quality and the wherewithal to be one. And then I would put Zakaria on the right-hand side of midfield, central midfield. So you could think of a base like this, Pogba, Zakaria, Locatelli. Oh, I should go like that. Pogba, oh, so Pogba up here, Zakaria, Locatelli. And uh, again, physical, technical midfield, exactly what Allegri likes. The front three will be what the front three are. When case is fit, it's going to be Kiesa, Vlavic, Di Maria. Very good. Very potent attack. And then defense will be what the defense is. But at this point, and the Mercato, it's May. <laughs> it's, uh, it's crazy that we got these two deals done, especially Paul Pogba. You have to be ecstatic of what he's doing or that he's taking... Not 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 chance, but he, he's committing to the to Juventus. He's turned down PSG money. He's coming back to Juventus. I don't know what he's going to say on his return. Whether he's back from vacation for Man United, don't worry about it. Just be excited because when he when he steps on that field, he is a top five central midfielder, and he automatically uh, increases our midfield like tenfold. Like that midfield now, like I just read off those three names. That is a top two midfield in the league. If you're going to compare it to Chalhana, Glue, Barella, and Brozovic, it's right there. It's right there. So again, and again, we might even do more stuff in the summer, but for now, Pogba on the left-hand side of midfield, Locatelli is a regista, Zakaria on the right, dynamic Paul Pogba can be the more advanced guy. Zakaria Locatelli can not, yeah, mop up and, and play more defensively. He's going to be able to play balls forward to uh, Vlavic, play one-twos with Vlavic, plays into the space for Di Maria and Chiesa to run on to. He has scoring goals himself. He's going to have more opportunity, more responsibility. Um, he's going to be more relaxed and in a better environment here at Juventus. And I can't wait. I can't wait for him to be back. I can't wait for the first game of the season when he lines up with all these guys. Poor Cremonese, we would play them first, match day one. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't know who we're playing yet. The schedule's not out. But everyone, thank you all for watching this Coach's Corner. Pogba's back. Get excited. Look at these stats. Let me know if these stats do anything for you. Let me know if you, if you can make assessments on these stats or if you're just more of an eye test person. I'm both. I am both. Um, but stats paint a better picture because because some people might have agendas and just lie on the internet and say, hey, Paul Pogba has been inconsistent when statistically, absolutely not he's been. So we'll see. We'll see what he brings to the table next season in the black and white. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Be sure to watch our Coach's Corners all year or all summer. Whenever the next person comes in, next player comes in, and uh, yeah, subscribe, like the video, comment down below what your thoughts are on Paul Pogba. We'll see you next time. Ciao.